Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I want to kind of go over spindles that are commonly used for the uh, SLA Mustang or double wishbone um, suspensions in general. I'll kind of go over ones that are on the market and then go over why I chose the spindle that I chose. We'll start off with the hub. Uh, I want to use a hub that has the Mustang bolt pattern, so 5 by 114.3 uh, millimeters. I don't want to have to have a custom part which will require re-drilling or have to change out the wheels that I already have on the car. So just having the bolt pattern, a Mustang bolt pattern, is preferred. Right, the next thing is availability of spare parts. The SN95 hub is a sealed hub, so the bearings come with the hub when you buy the whole thing. Uh, so it's just nice that you can just run down to the parts store, buy a whole new hub, everything is set to go, or you can buy it offline. It's not a custom part, it's easy to attain. The other thing could be if it has bearings that are easily attained, that is nice also. Uh, but I don't wanna have like a custom hub that I can only get from one source or a few sources that could have potential for not having it in stock. Lastly with the hub is the tone ring. So on my car, I run ABS and traction control. So I need to have a speed sensor tone ring on the, on the front wheels, on all the wheels. So having a hub that has the tone ring is, it ha is a requirement. It can be, it doesn't have to be an SN95 hub, but it needs to have the same uh, tooth count as the Mustang, which this is a 50 tooth tone wheel. So having that on the hub is a requirement for me. As far as the spindle, for the time being, something that has the, the brake mounting points for the Mustang brakes is preferred. That way I don't need to have the extra expenditure of getting all new calipers or rotors and things like that having one that works with the brakes that are already on the car, which are really good brakes, is preferred. And then the geometry of the spindle, that is one that I am still trying to figure out. So spindle geometry is not high on my list right now. It is something that is uh, that I acknowledge, uh, but at this time I, I'm still learning all that. So I think I can make any, almost any geometry kind of work since I am doing like a bestoke system. It's all custom. I don't need to reuse anything. I'm figuring out all the geometry as I go. So the spindle geometry is not high on my list to change. That's why I don't want to design my own spindle. I don't have the experience at the moment to place all the lower control uh, upper control, brakes, uh, steering, all in the correct location. So having a spindle that already has that defined is uh, the preferred method that I'm going with at the moment. That way it's just one less variable in the equation at the moment for setting up the whole suspension. All right, the most common spindle right now for being used for the SLA Mustang is the SN95 spindle. So this is one off of the 94 to 2004 Mustangs. They, they come in two varieties. So there's a 94, 95 version, and then there's a 96 to 2004 version. This is the 96 to 2004 version. You could tell by the steering arm is uh, straight. On the 94 to 95 ones, there's a little bit of a drop down there. Uh, another difference is how far the hub sticks out. There's, there's a slight uh, slight difference in the two, not that noticeable. The biggest thing is your steering arm, which was just a change due to having to move the steering rack with the, the mod motors. So with using a SN95 spindle, you can get adapters like this that will just kind of bolt on here and give you a place to uh, bolt on the upper ball joint. So this is an adapter from Griggs. I think there's a couple companies that make adapters like this that will then allow you to use a SN95 spindle in a double wishbone configuration. The geometry isn't ideal, but it's been used for many years. The 
Factory 5 Cobras have used this uh, setup for a long time. Griggs obviously uses this setup since they sell the adapter. There have been other DIY ones that have used this setup to make a, a well working SLA suspension. So starting with this as a base is not that bad of an idea. So now we'll get into spindles that have the upper ball joint already configured on them. The first one that comes to mind is the Mustang 2 spindle. So that is one that was used in the 70s Mustangs and is a common one for uh, hot rodders to use currently. Uh, there's several companies that make aftermarket ones of those that have corrected the geometry or do drop spindles and things like that. Uh, that one does have separate bearings, a separate hub uh, that it's kind of like a trailer or a truck kind of setup where it has a inner and outer bearings. I don't know if it has the, the tone wheel on uh, any of the hubs. I'm sure you can probably get it since that spindle and setup has been used for a long time, but that is something that I'm not too sure about. And it's just a spindle that I kind of ruled out from the beginning as I know I've heard the geometry is not great for doing a double wishbone suspension for a race setup as I'm trying to do. The next one is the Factory 5 spindle. So that one is one that they've recently made for the Mark IV Cobra that they make. And it's uh, modeled kind of after the SN95 one. So it uses the SN95 hub, which I really like. It has the upper ball joint adapter. I think it even uses the same brake setup. It has a bolt on. Uh, steering tie rod attachment, which is kind of nice. So you can uh, kind of probably adjust that and make your own. The problem is that for one, Cobras are much lighter than Mustangs. So I don't know how strong that spindle is to work for like a high grip Mustang. Uh, next is there's not that much uh, measurements out there. So if you're to use that, you'd have to go buy one, spend that cost, figure out all the measurements and put that into whatever program that you're designing in. So that is a cost that I just, I can't justify at the, at this moment, but it is, looks like a nice option. All right. The next one that we're going to talk about is a spindle from Mod Squad Garage. I don't think it's a company that too many people really know about. They're heavy in the autocross scene. So they have a C prepared Mustang that they have built their own SLA suspension for. So in prepared class, you're not able to change out that uh, the lower cross member. So they've made their own spindle and control arms that work with the factory K member, which is pretty cool. Their spindle is pretty basic, but it works quite well. It's just a flat piece of steel that they have then bolted or welded on all the attachment points for the, the ball joints. The spindle is a drop spindle on it. It's a inch and three quarter. A drop which is nice and then it also uses a SN95 hub which is ideal and it has a place for the speed sensor. The brakes that you have to use with that one I don't think are the Mustang brakes. I think they have to use aftermarket brakes so that's one thing to consider. The spindle is made out of steel so it is heavier than some of the other options out there but it's probably about the same as one of these. And then the steering tie rod attachment, I think is also a bolt on affair for that one. So that's kind of nice because then you can adjust it by making your own if you needed to. All right, the next ones that we'll talk about are much higher in cost, but they also are a nice race unit. So that is Griggs and Cortex. Their spindles are made out of built aluminum. So they are lighter, they're strong, they, Everything kind of bolts onto them, so they're easy to modify if you need to. The Griggs one uses the SN95 hub, so that's easily available as we discussed earlier. The Cortex one uses a bolt-on hub, which is similar to like the Corvette style, but it uses the bolt pattern of the Mustang. So that might be a hub that they manufacture uh, therefore, they would be probably the only source that you can get that hub. That one also has an internal speed sensor, so I don't know the tooth count on their hub versus the Mustang hub. But both of those units are really nice. They are pricier. They're up in the $3,000 range for a pair, while the Mod Squad Garage one is like $1,500 a, a pair. I think the 
factory five one is five to six hundred dollars a pair so you can see the cost increase as you go up and then there are other units out there there's the corvette spindles that a lot of people like to use and i have looked at them and i've thought about it but the bolt pattern is the biggest hiccup on those for me and yes you can re-drill the the hub to get the mustang bolt pattern there are people that do that but as i said i want to be able to just get a part off the shelf bolt it on and we be back on our way with minimum downtime you don't want a uh, failure like that and needing custom parts to ruin your race weekend so the, for that reasons i've kind of ruled out the corvette spindles and things like that We'll throw one oddball out there. This is a spindle that I want to just get my hands on to kind of check out. And that is one from a Supra or a Lexus SC. So it is a double wishbone suspension. It does have the bolt pattern of a Mustang and it does have a tone wheel for uh, ABS. I don't know the count on the tone wheel, but it does have a speed sensor on the spindle. So that is one that would be kind of cool to just get our hands on, get some measurements, see if it's a viable option to start using on the Mustang. I'm sure the weight actually between a Mustang and a Supra is pretty similar. So I think everything kind of is showing that that spindle could be a viable option given can figure out the right geometry for uh, that spindle with the Mustang suspension, obviously. But those parts are also really hard to get. So I don't know how viable of option it actually could be, but I'm sure getting like the bearings or hub and everything is pretty easy that since it is just a stock part or actually finding the spindle is not that easy in junkyards. I have seen them popping up on eBay and the price isn't too bad for them. So I think it could be a viable option. Uh, if we could just figure out the geometry measurements of it. As far as the geometry for them, as I've mentioned, that is something that I'm still trying to figure out. So obviously the Moscow Garage, Griggs, Cortex have preferred geometry for racing. I think they have a much lower kingpin or steering uh, inclination angle. Then they also have a spindle drop to lower the car down without really affecting the geometry of the suspension too much. So those things are all things that would be preferred. Uh, but at this point, I can't really get that. So that leads me into the spindle that I plan to be using. I plan to be using the SN95 spindle. All right, I have the adapter for it. As I mentioned, this spindle has been used for countless SLA suspensions on Mustangs in the past. It has all the criteria that I want. It uses a easily attainable hub. It has all the attachment points kind of already there for the components that I'm using. It has the, the brakes, the steering. So I don't have to try to reconfigure my steering or anything like that. I could just put the spindle in. I know that it will work since I'm using at the moment a stock K member. So the steering will all work. The bump steer will be minimal and I'll be able to adjust the bump steer as I've done with the car currently. All right, that covers everything that I kind of want to go over with the spindle. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. I'll try to answer them or maybe I'll make another video in the future uh, explaining more of the reasoning of why I'm choosing certain components that I'm choosing. But that basically covers everything that I want to go over of why I am still planning on using the SN95 spindle at this time. So thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys in the next video. Later.